Uh, let's pray for those that are out, that are traveling. And uh, Jimmy's way up. Is it Boston? Like Boston. <laughs> I don't know. I've never been able to like nail the 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 sound of of Boston. So it's. You can park the car. Okay. Well, that because I'm copying him. <laughs> God is so good. He is. He is. Oh, my goodness. He's so good, and we're not. Yeah, so, <laughs> we fail. We but fail. he's because he is worthy. And he says we are loved. And we are forgiven. And we are, we are mended. And we, Lord God, even as we come this morning, even as broken vessels, you mend us. You mend us. You keep us. You hold us. You help us. We pray for those, Lord God, that are gone this morning. I just pray that you bless them, use them, empower them, anoint them in Jesus' name. Give them the time of rest with their families, Lord God. Give them a a time, Lord God, of of just uh, knowing, Lord God, that no matter where they are or what they're doing, you are with them. Yes. And you are for them. Thank you, Lord. Just like you are right here, right now. You are for us. And you are with us. And you hold nothing good back from us. Do you know that? That he holds nothing good back from us. We all just have a different idea of what good is. (laughs) Oh, but everything good comes from God. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. And the one major good thing that came from God is Christ himself. Came for us, died for us. Hallelujah. So we love you this morning, Lord. We give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor for all that you have done for us. We give you all the praise. Thank you, Lord. There's a reason why you can't stop singing that this morning. Yeah. 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 Come on. Yeah. You might as well just go ahead and surrender to the Holy Ghost this morning because there's a reason. (laughs) Holy Ghost trying to convince you this morning that he's good. He's good. He's good. No matter what you can see, feel, or think, he is good. No matter what the issue are in life, he's good. No matter what you've been walking through, he's good. No matter what kind of troubles come your way, he's good. No matter what kind of oppression you've ever felt, he's still good. No matter what kind of things are sitting on your shoulder this morning, he is good. Come on. (laughs) Praise God. Hallelujah. He is good. When everything else fails, and it will, yes, yeah, when everything else seems to just fall apart, and you don't got one bit of strength left inside of your body or your mind or your soul to say, I can do this, <laughs> when you ain't got nothing left. <laughs> The testimony is that he's still good. Yes, he is. He's still there. Hallelujah. And he's still chasing you. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Yes. And he catches us. Mm. You know he can catch up with you, right? (laughs) The pitiful thing about that is that we think we can outrun God. No, we can. No, we can. We sometimes foolishly think we can outrun God. Yeah. But nothing... Nothing that we do can keep his goodness from coming after us. Come on. Come on. Nothing that we've done, nothing we thought, anything that we have dreamed up in our own interpretation of how we feel this or that ought to happen. His goodness continues to come after us day in, day out. Whether we recognize it or not. My God. It's still His goodness. It's His faithfulness that wakes us up every morning. It's His goodness that allows these limbs to move. Stiff sometimes, but they do have mobility. It's His goodness that provides for us. It's His goodness that that moves in our bodies and and brings about resurrection power to, to cause those things that were dead to come alive again. Nothing we can do cool, about it except receive. Receive. 
Receive. Believe and receive. That's it. That's it. Oh, Lord, I love your goodness. I love you, Lord. <laughs> I love you, Lord Jesus. Mm, 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 mm. Who is it? Who's got something to say? All right, Pat. Come get my microphone right there. Right As we were singing that song, he's running after me. The Holy Spirit took me back a couple weeks ago on the message that Ellery did about um, about this. My Lord. And he told me, he said, so many looks over their shoulder and they don't see me. He said, but if they look to the other side, I'm running with them. <laughs> he said, I ain't catching up at My you. Lord. I'm running with you. My Lord. You just don't have eyes to see that I am standing right there with you. And I'm running this race with you. And I'm protecting you from a lot of things that stands before you because I'm right there with you. Come on. Sure, that's it? Praise God, praise God, praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Ooh, our unseen God loves us. <laughs> Miss Tony, you have something this morning? Yes. I thought so. <laughs> Since you used the word testimony, I was thinking of my testimony, which I shared very few days ago with some friends in um, the goodness of God. Yeah. I am standing here because of his goodness, yeah. because of his faithfulness. Yes. That's why I am standing here. And not only me, all of you yes. are standing yes. here because of his goodness, yes. his favor, and his mercy. Yes. 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 He followed me from Puerto Rico to New York, or he took me from Puerto Rico to New York. He chased you to Puerto Rico. He chased me. He had a plan for my life. My plans were not his plans, yes. but his goodness. As I am singing that song there, my heart is beating because where would I be right now? Oh, come on. Where would I be without the if Lord? If he had not reached out and pulled come me on. to his mercy and come his favor. On. His goodness have followed me all the days of my life. I have experienced the goodness of God. Yes. I have been in situations that only his love and goodness yes. have provided uh -huh. and helped me where I am standing. Uh -huh. And if I'm standing today, yes. it's because of his mercy. That's right. That's his right. love for me. Hallelujah. I was not chasing after him. Come on. He was chasing after me. Come on now. And when I thought I had it all planned, <laughs> yeah. he had a different plan for my life. Yes, he so did. And thank God that he drew me yeah. to that plan. Thank God that his Holy Spirit quickened me yeah. to see that plan that I could not see. I had eyes for a different plan. Yeah. But the Holy Spirit allowed me, quickened me to see the goodness of God. Yes. And for that I am thankful this Thank day and will forever be thankful yes. for him yes. Yes. pulling me, drawing me, loving Thank me, you, chasing Jesus. after me. And I can say this day, he is faithful. Yeah. Yes. 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 His goodness yeah. will never end. And no matter Everything that you do, all your goodness, all your good works, all your goodness, they crumble That's right. before the goodness of That's God. Right. Not comparison to that. Yes. So thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Yes. 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 Here lately, as I intercede and pray for those that are close to my heart, and I pray specifically 
the Lord keeps reminding me that his ways are mysterious. My Lord, he So now I end my prayers. I lay them out. How my mama's heart. My Lord. How my friend's heart. How my grandmother's heart. And with discernment wants things to go. And the word said that his thoughts are higher than ours. So the thoughts that I have toward my yes. children. He said, my thoughts are higher than that. They're higher. And they come from a good place. My thoughts come from love. But his love's greater than mine. And so now, after I lay my petitions out, no matter how many times, I just told my son, I said, you don't understand whether I wake up at one, two, three, four, five, and off and on during the day, I intercede for you. But now I'm learning not to just say that. I said, Lord, okay, here's what I want. But your ways are mysterious. So even though it doesn't look like it's coming around or in the path that I want it to come around in, your ways are mysterious. Yes. They're better. And I'm learning to trust in that. Amen. 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 Hmm. Well, that just takes me here then. I was going to share scripture this morning, but I'm not going to read all that. I just want to read one part of it. And it's in Ephesians. Oh, I'm going to take this back. Give this back to me. Thank you for doing that. It's like, you can't have two, Lorraine. <laughs> Hallelujah. In Ephesians 3, verse 20, it says, Now, now, right now, now to him, now to him who is able. We ain't able. <laughs> now to him who is able to do above and beyond all that we ask or think. That's it. See, Patricia said she just lays it out there. She just puts it on out there in front of God and says, okay, this is it. And he is able. He's able to do above and beyond all that we ask or even that we think. My God. According to the power that works in you, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. So to him who's able. Sonia testified about his goodness and his faithfulness. You know why he's good? He's able. He's able to go beyond what you ask. Come on. Oh, thank you. He's Lord. able to go beyond what you think. Oh, thank you, Lord. He's able to do exceedingly and above. <laughs> He's able to bypass your own understanding. Yes. That's it. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank God for that. <laughs> I mean. Oh, yes. I mean. <laughs> and, and, and Patricia says, she goes, his ways are higher than our ways. Thank God. Amen. Thank God. Because if we were left to our own oh. abilities to be God and Savior of our own life. Ooh. We're in a mess now. We've been a Come on. Mess. <laughs> Jesus. I remember telling a minister uh, a long time ago, I was working for him, putting a, a camp meeting together for him in Texas. And I was just upset about the way some things were going, you know, while we were putting this thing together. And I told him and the rest of the team, I said, that person is just 
so, oh, he ought to be so glad that I'm not God. And the minister looked at me. He says, we're all glad you're not God, Lorraine. <laughs> I said, all right, then I've been putting my place right there. He wouldn't let me be upset. <laughs> but if we were God over ourselves, well, we were at one time and we made a mess out of it. We sure did make a mess. And we actually, we thought we were God over ourselves and we made a mess. So that's why he, his thoughts are greater because what we think is just so low level. <laughs> but he's able to do above and beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works in you to him, be the glory in the church to him, be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations. So I don't know how big you think your prayers are today. I don't know how big you think your problem is today. I don't know if you don't, if you think that, that this is just beyond any repair or any doing and nothing's going to go any, there's just no way this can get any better. He says this morning to all of us, he is able. He is able. I looked at my body over these last two weeks and I'm like, Lord, I'm not able. I'm just not able. To keep up the pace, to keep off the pain, to keep off the... I'm not able. I don't care what I eat, don't eat, drink, don't drink, no matter what it is, it just ain't working. <laughs> and I'm just, you know what I'm saying? I'm, and then the devil loves to come and help out your mind, doesn't he? Doesn't the devil just love to come help you talk to yourself? Oh, he just thinks, oh, great, we're having a party now. And so he'll come and help you think about it. He'll come and help you talk about it. Oh, my God, but sir, and I'm just never going to get over this. And I don't think I'm ever going to be able to do that. And I just don't think I'm ever going to be accomplishing that. And what am I thinking? What am I doing? What? And he loves that playground. Yeah. And what it does, it reminds me that I'm just not able. Yeah. But he is able. And when I pray, when I ask, I know that he's able to hear me. I know that he's able to repair me. I know that he's able to rescue me. I know that he's able to go way past where I can do or say or think, go way past of what I can accomplish to help anybody else, not even myself, to know that he's got this. He's able to do what is necessary for whatever that prayer is about. Come on. So maybe this is the call this morning, you know, for this portion right now, the service of this, whatever, whatever's heavy on your heart this morning, whether it be your son, my son, my kids, your son, my God, what's happening with the sons? You know what? Because the enemy wants to eat him up for breakfast. But he's able to do above what we can even pray or think about what God needs to do for their lives. Because don't we have it where, oh God, you need to do this, this, and that. If you would just do that, then that would happen, and then they could do that. And what I, Like Sonia said, had it all planned out of what we need to see to make sure that we know that God is doing something. And God says, I can come into the back door. You'll never see me working until it's done. Come on, because he don't want us messing with it. <sighs> Just pray about it. Come on. So whatever the issue is this morning, whatever is heavy on our heart, whether it's our family, our jobs, our money, our, our, our kids, our grandkids, our spouses, our relations, whatever it is, all I know that he is able yes, yes. to do what is good for us and what is perfect for us. Not necessarily to do what we want him to do, but he does what is perfect for us. So would you stand with me right now? We're going to pray. Is that all right that we pray right now? I think we just need to pray.
and just to believe that he is able to take care of whatever that thing is. You got that. Listen, while I was talking, that thing was on your mind right there. That thing was on your, whatever that thing was, whatever it is, he is able. Sonia, come and pray. Perfect will be done. Come on. That's the perfect phrase to say. Lord, let your perfect will be done. In every issue that we have. In every family member that we have in our hearts, that we have been concerned, that we have been praying, that we've been expecting changes. Father, let your perfect will be done in their lives. Because no one can move their heart but you. No one can shape that heart but you. No one can transform that mind but you. So this day, Father, we ask for your perfect will to be done in each one of those members in our families. Nothing is impossible for you. Father, don't let us try to change things. Lord, keep us away from trying to transform their ways. Because you're the only one that can transform their hearts, Lord. If you do not work in the house, if you do not edify the house, we work in vain. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we seal your prayer, we seal your work in their hearts. Let it be your way, Father. And keep us away from crumbling down what you're doing. Keep us away, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray and I believe that the work yes. is being done as yes. of right now. Yes. Amen. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. And Lord, we also pray that whatever it is on our hearts this morning, for us this morning, whatever we walked in with this morning, whatever has been heavy on our heart today, this morning, this week, this month, this year, whatever, Lord God, seems to continually come and visit us and ail us, wherever our, our weaknesses, our trials, our places, Lord God, of knowing that we are just not enough. All those places where we are unable, Lord God, which is every place. God, we ask, Lord God, the very God that is able to do above and ab above and beyond what we ask or think, Lord God, we are asking and we know you're going to do above that. So we ask, God, touch us today. Heal us in our bodies. Heal us in our soul. Come, Lord God, touch our minds in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, heal every part of us, spirit, soul, body. God, cause our faith to arise in a way that we have not seen before. God, strengthen our walk with you. Strengthen, Lord God, our, our, our belief. Strengthen our faith. Oh, God. Come and do what is necessary. This is a, this is a, listen, this is a scary prayer. Because that means he's going to come and do what's That's necessary. Right. That's right. The Bible says if you ask him for bread, will he give you a stone? No. We're asking him, come on. Yes. He's going to go beyond what we ask. He's going to say, okay, yeah, I'll do that. Yes. But wait till you see this. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> We are asking you, Lord God, to do all what is necessary in our life to be free, to be no longer held captive in any way, shape, or form. God, every place we are weak, you are made strong. So we give you praise. Yes. We yes. give you glory. We give you honor. Oh, Lord God, we acknowledge, Lord God, that you are the one that answers the prayer. You are the one that brings, Lord God, the perfection of what's necessary, the, perf the perfect prayer. <laughs> you answer it perfectly. 
And I want you to know this morning that God has not forgotten any prayer you've ever prayed. Come on. That's Come it. on. Come on. You know, isn't that interesting that he forgot all your sin, but he didn't forget your prayers? Is that the coolest thing ever? Yes. I mean, come on. Because it's our sin or our sin nature that causes us to think that God won't answer prayer. Isn't that right? Yes. We think that God don't want to hear from us because, ooh, look what. No, listen, he, he, he forgave our sin. He's thrown it into the sea of forgetfulness, yes. but he won't forget things that you pray. And even though it seems like it's been a long time that he ain't answered, ooh, he answers perfectly. In its perfect time, in its perfect season. That's right. That's right. So, Lord, we trust you and rely on you this morning that you have us in such a complete way that not only do you have us, but you have our families, you have our future, you have our present Hallelujah. You have us so good that we'll be with you forever. <laughs> amen? amen? Can you say amen, church? Come on, amen. believe God this morning. Amen. Believe God. Amen. Believe God this morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, before I stop, I want you all to just agree with me in a prayer that I have this morning, okay? And, and I know that God's on the throne about this, but, you know, it really helps to have people just kind of lock in with you and pray, right? Amen. I got to go to court this week, Thursday, 10 o'clock. Please remind me of that. <laughs> I better set that on my phone. After a year, it's April, no, March would have been a year. I'm finally going to court about my car wreck. It's been that long. Yes. And so I told the attorney, I was like, I'm not looking to get rich. I'm not looking to sue anybody to get a bunch of, I said, I want everything back that I had to put come out. On, come yeah. on, come on. All that was lost, all yeah. the money we had to put out of pocket yeah. for the yeah. car rentals, for yeah. the car fixing, yeah. for the deductibles, yeah. for the car, the doctor, yeah. for both doctors, for yeah. the hospital. Yeah. Total restitution. Yeah, yeah. Complete. complete. But he does beyond. <laughs> I'm looking for the beyond. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm serious. We had to give up our car. We had to we had to change our car. Everything, and so we just went. And it was and it, the, an accident happened like two weeks before we opened the the business. I could hardly even work. My family had to come and help us work. And I mean, it was just a anyway. So so God knows all those details. So I'm just asking God, right, and I'm asking. God goes beyond what I ask or think. Yeah. The, that's what the scripture, what we just read. Yeah. So would you agree with me this yeah. morning? Yeah. Come on, Pat, would you pray? Yes, yes, yes. Father, I thank you. First off, Father, I thank you that Lorraine's still here. Yes. Yeah. The enemy had a, a plan, but a, your plan was great. A car wreck and two COVIDs, yes. I'm still here. Yes. <laughs> and I thank you, Father, that this is a woman that's faithful. <laughs> And I thank you, Father, just as you say it in your word. You are faithful to your people. And I thank you, Father, that that it ain't you said in your word about the return. There's some that gets 30, some that gets 50, some oh, gets 100. 60, some we gets call 100. forth the hundredfold Arrubo. over Arrubo. her in Jesus' name. Yes, that Lord. she sees a hand of God yes, moving Jesus. madly that she has to do mm. it, nothing but say, this is God. Yes. It's, it's beyond what I yes. thought. It's beyond what I dreamed. It's yes. beyond what I prayed. Because, mm -hmm. Father, you said you do yep. abundantly above. above all we can ask. Yes. And I thank you for that, Father. And I thank you, Father, for everything that was done in her body yes. or Ellery's body in this yes. situation is redone by the Spirit of God that the body will line up with purpose. It will line up with the healing of God. Yes. It comes in submission in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. And I thank you, Father, that both, both begins to experience the goodness of God in their body. Yes, everything yes, that's yes. out of order, everything yes. that's out of way, that you complete it. Yes, Jesus. And you bring complete restoration. Yes, complete restoration. 
over his lungs, over her back and heel. Father, we call for the restitution of the healing. Mm. She might get money for the situation, but we call for the restitution as well for the healing. Because the blood paid the price. The blood has already been sent to be bought for their healing. It came and he gave his life so that they can be healed. And I thank you, Father. I thank you for what you're doing. That this is going to be a springboard, like a pool springboard into something great from you, Lord. We thank you for that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Favor, Lord God, in yeah, favor, favor. All over them, Father. And I thank you, Lord, even now, Father, you're the God that goes over and beyond our wildest imagination, Lord yeah. God. So I thank you for the overflow. Yes. The yes. overflow, Lord so God. But Father, for your input yeah. into them, Lord God, that you bring an overflow through and out of them, Lord God that everything that was stolen is being not only returned, but a restitution yes. beyond their yes. imagination, yes. Lord God. So thank you for favor that you give. Thank you, Jesus. To them for a favor with you, but also Ooh, favor with man. Yes, 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 yes. And yes. anywhere and Proverbs everywhere. Proverbs 3. <laughs> anywhere and everywhere, Lord God, that the enemy would try to bring some side yes. minder in there, Lord God. I thank you that it's already been overthrown. Yes, yes. I thank you, Lord God, that it is settled and that your goodness and your mercy are following in great ways, Lord God. Deliverer. Over them. But yes, you are. You are their deliverer, Lord God. You are their provider, yes. but you are a great provider because yes. you are a great, great God. We thank you for it today in yes. Jesus' name. Jesus. Well, Jesus. We were singing that. Jesus. I see the whirlwind, one around you, the one around Lorraine. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord says, I'm here. I'm here. Nothing won't touch you because I'm covering you. Nothing won't not come because I'm here surrounding wow. you. But there's a whirlwind around both of y'all. And he said, know that it's me. It's my presence. And it's because I love you. And I'm here for you. Today on the uh, church calendar, which I follow, by the way, if you ever wonder what I might be ministering on, just look up the lectionary 2024. And it may be any one of those scriptures. But today is Trinity Sunday. And you can keep playing, Nancy. And it's very difficult. Can you play? The Trinity is a very difficult doctrine. And uh, many preacher helps, different podcasts and theologians actually say, kind of stay away from it. And I can see why, because it is extremely confusing, but there's one aspect about the Trinity that we can latch on to, and it's something that Patricia said, mystery. There is a mystery. And God should be mysterious. Shouldn't be someone we can easily figure out, like, you know. Right? Remember, remember, when, um, remember when we were kids and remember when magic was mysterious? Someone does a magic trick. And we're like, oh, and that was the greatest thing ever. You know, it's amazing. We tell our parents, did you see what he did? You see that? You see that? And then as we grow older, you know, and TV shows come out and they give you all the how they did it and everything. It's like, oh, now I know how they did it. And then when you go see the magic show again, you're like, eh, it's 
it's not as fun. It's not as, it's not as, it's not as, not as much fun. They just totally sapped the joy and the mystery out of it. And we can't explain God, but we can, in, a, in our attempts to explain God, sap the joy oh my. and the mystery out of this God who, who in some... So we cannot do that. I have a truncated version of what I was going to say today, but it's very, it's very specific. Um, it's me down the running lights. And the young man Isaiah, you read chapters 1 through 5, and Isaiah just lets the people of Judah have it. He just lets them have it. Woe unto them. Woe to those who drag iniquity. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. Woe. And, and he pronouncing judgment and destitution and Condemnation against all these ne'er-do-well sinners. And in chapter 6, it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah says, I saw the Lord seated on a high and lofty throne, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphim were standing above him. They each had six wings. With two they covered their faces. With two they covered their feet. Let me read this another way. Because this guy saw God, right? King Uzziah was a good king. He had an issue with pride at the end of his life, died uh, uh, in, as, a, as a leper in, 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 uh, in isolation, but he was a good king, but he dies. Then Isaiah says, the same Isaiah who prophesied woe to all of the ne'er-do-well sinners in the kingdom. You guys are going to get it. He says, I saw the Lord seated on a high and lofty throne and the hem of his robe filled the temple. God has to be some kind of amazing that when you're going to describe him, the thing that sticks in your mind is you should have seen the hem. They said, but what about the rest of them? What do you look like? I, I don't know, but that hem was amazing. So and the other translation says it's a train filled the temple, like a, a king's robe, and the train is like a, almost like, like a wedding gown. You know, it's got that, that beautiful long train, and for kings, sometimes they have to have servants carry it. So he was so awestruck by that train, that hem, it was everywhere. And seraphim were, and seraphim were standing above him. They each had six wings. Two, they covered their face. Two, they covered their feet. And, and, and with two, they flew. He was so amazed. Seraphim is, the seraphim is described as fiery flying serpents or dragons. Yep. I don't, we, don't, we don't see it that way. But that's the translation. Meaning that even God is so powerful that his own angels that he created, they kind of look like dragons that are on fire. And these dragons that are on fire can't even look at God. And to one another, they call to each other. One group says, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of armies. The other one says, his glory filled the whole earth. And then Isaiah says, the foundations of the doorway shook at the sound of their voices. And, and, and the temple was filled with smoke. He sees God. And it's amazing until verse 5. Because then he sees himself. And he says, then I said... Woe is me. I'm ruined. That word also means I'm destroyed. Put a fork in me. I'm done. It's over. I just saw God and I just saw the flying dragons. It's over. I'm a man of unclean lips and live among a people of unclean lips. And because my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of armies, the same preacher prophet who had a problem with everyone else who had a, a woe unto you guys, all of a sudden he's like, huh, I'm one of you, I'm one of them. Here I am coming down hard on everybody else and I'm just like everybody else. I'm calling woe on everybody, woe is me. I'm the one ruined, I'm the one, I'm the man of unclean lips among a people of unclean lips. 
And the only reason he knew that was because my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of armies. Here he is. I thought God was my boy. Yeah. <laughs> Prophesying against all them sinners. God, my, my boy God. And suddenly he's like, oops, God's not my boy. Apparently he's uh, the king of the entire earth and uh, the king of the Lord of armies. And no matter how many, how much people sin, the angel said that his glory fills the whole earth. And this, the one of, at verse 6, one of the seraphim flew to me, and in his hand was a glowing coal that he had taken from the altar with tongs. He touched my mouth with it, and he said, Now that this has touched, now that this has touched your lips, your iniquity is removed, and your sin is atoned for. I'll leave the other scriptures for another time. But now that this has touched your lips, your iniquity is removed, and your sin is atoned atoned for. Your sin is atoned for. What was what to be atoned? What was wrong has been made right for you. See, so sometimes you have to atone for your sins or your ne'er-do-wellness, right? Have you ever atoned for what you have done? You had to pay something back? And I thought of this story and in light of what you guys were saying about your kids and your sons and and I, you know, of course, I have one, two, a couple as well. But uh, here we go. Your sin has been atoned for. How many of you had a, have had a problematic child? And this problematic child has ended up in the uh, court of the state of whatever, Georgia, Florida, whoever. Because they did something that calls for them to be arrested. You know the heartache and the shame of it, right? Yeah. And... So let's say you're ne'er do well, son or daughter, beloved, I should say, son or daughter, is ordered by the court to pay restitution of of two hundred dollars to their victim. Maybe they stole something. Two hundred dollars and, and, and sixty days of community service. And your rebellious son or daughter, you as a parent, know one thing for sure: they don't have any money to pay the restitution for the crime they did. I told them, don't go out with those friends because they're not your friends. And you did. And when you went out with them, you got in trouble with them. And because of that, you have to do 60 days of community service. And you don't even have a car to go there to do your community service. And you don't have a job. And you can't pay the $200. You, they, are, they, are, they are being told to atone by the judge to atone for their crimes, their sins. But they don't have what it takes to atone. They can't do it. How many of you as mom or dad has said, but when we get home, you, I'm going to lay down the law. And, and, you, and, and you, I'm not paying it. You're paying it. That's what I'm going to say to that. I'm going I'm to finally, it's going to happen. You're not going to go out anymore. You're going to pay it. And you're going to walk the straight and narrow. How many have had that speech? And just like socialism, it works only in theory. It's a great theory. It's a wonderful theory. Your son or daughter is going to walk the straight and narrow. They're going to make restitution. They're going to pay their fine. And they're going to uh, call your friends that you got in trouble with to take you to the Boys and Girls Club and to, and to pick up trash and to do community service. But your son and daughter can't atone for their stuff because they don't have a job and they don't have any money. So someone has to, unless you want them to go down hard. So who makes atonement for <laughs> our criminal children? We, do. we make, we atone. <laughs> we, write the check. we write the check. We take them to community service. Yeah, I'm going to be late to work today. How come? I, I've just got to run some errands for the next, like, for the next 60 days. <laughs> drop them off, pick them up. To your horror, you drop them off, and then when you go pick them up, they're not there. Because someone else has picked them up beforehand, and then the whole cycle starts all over again. Anyway, 
The idea is that you as mom or dad make atonement for your son or your daughter because of your love for your son or your daughter. Because you love them. And the seraphim, the fiery serpent angel, said, your iniquity, Isaiah, is removed and your sin has been atoned for for you. He grabbed the coal from the altar where you do sacrifices. And this is the picture of the altar that we have on the cross where Christ was placed there under the fires of God. And he became our atoning sacrifice. And God made it right for us when we couldn't make it right for ourselves because of his great love for us. The same thing that we do for our sons and our daughters when they're in over their heads and even in their rebellion, we say, because I love you, I'm going to do this for you. And they may not even care. Just like God atones for our sins and there are a lot of people who don't even care. But he still does it for us. And this reminds me of, of the change that happens in Isaiah because of maybe the heartache or hard-heartedness that we may have toward our own progeny. It's good to remember that before God, I'm that rebellious son and daughter as well. You ever had a conversation with your ne'er-do-well son or daughters when they have kids and they complain about your grandkids, their kids? Oh, they're doing this. And I said, and they did that. And I just, I don't know, mom. I don't know. Why are they doing that, dad? Why did they? And then you're like, welcome to my world. Because <laughs> literally 25 years ago, I know another little boy who did the same thing. The cycle of life. But thank God that he has had mercy on us. He had mercy on rebellious me. That he atoned for stupid sinning me. And now maybe I can look back on those that, oh man, just really get under my skin. And say, yeah, you want to do woe unto them? Which there is that. But woe unto you, Ellery. And I am a man of unclean lips. And just like the others. And I'm the one who needs to be atoned for just like everyone else. So God, in your mercy, atone because you already have. For those we have thought about today, those that we have spoken of today, those that we have prayed for today. May your atonement become real to them. Because it is for them. It's not being withheld from them, but Lord, may their eyes be open. May the scales fall from their eyes to see the atonement that you have provided. You have made things right between them and yourself through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on this Trinity Sunday, Lord, he is you in the flesh. Jesus is God the Son who laid down his life for the kids that we've talked about and prayed about and for us, we who are your kids. And you've atoned, Lord. And the Holy Spirit, he is you as well. And your spirit, Father, let it go forth into our hearts as well as the hearts of those, again, that we have prayed for this morning. Change 
transformed. Do your Holy Spirit, do your stuff, Lord. Like Lorraine said, we all have our, our ideas about what you should be doing, what you could be doing, what you need to be doing, but Lord, we're just going to let the floodgates open. Just burst the dams, God, and do your God stuff. Do your spirit stuff, Lord. Reveal your atonement and your sacrifice to all of us, starting with me. And going forth, Father God, to my family, to my kids, and to everyone outside. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. And amen. And amen. You know, the message of hope in Isaiah, God goes to the prophet first, changes his life. And then the prophet speaks to Judah and then it starts to make the change in Judah and then from Judah to Israel and then from Israel the promises to the entire world yeah. this concentric circle and I think maybe that's how it is in our life yeah. Yeah. the epicenter is here God always seems to come back here to this and then from here the ripples go out let's stand that's good. thank you Nancy put you to work all day and listen, don't be, don't be scared about the, the thing about the seraphim being fiery uh, serpent dragons. The, I didn't, the, the implication there is that they're not evil. They're just, God is awesome and cool like that to make his seraphim angels look like that or appear like that. So, so if they've fallen from heaven and are evil now, that's them. That's on them. It's on God. That's on them. I was talking to Sherry today, and, and before I get lost in this, this uh, theological uh, nerdiness, every, almost just about every culture on the face of the earth has legends of spirit dragons, demons, from, from England to the, to the American Indian, to the Vikings, to the Chinese. There's something about the invisible realm. And these, what we call dragons, or what the Bible calls the seraphim. And some have fallen and caused, try to cause great havoc. But on the cross, Jesus has taken his heel and he has crushed the head of all the evil yeah. serpents. Ah! Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Jesus. Father, we thank you for your spirit today and this day. Lord, we glorify your name and what your son has done for us. Ah, the sound of my voice. In your fallenness, in your, you know, in your weaknesses, your trespasses, if there's guilt or if there's shame, the words of God are for you right now. That God says, because of what Christ has done for you, for the sake of my son and what he has done for you to atone for you, God says, I have forgiven you that your sins right now are completely and totally and unequivocally forgiven. And God says, I cast them now into the sea of forgetfulness. <laughs> your guilt has been removed. Your sins have been atoned for through Christ. Go in peace in Jesus name. This has been a production of Emerald City Christian Center. We would love to have you join us Sunday at 10.30 a.m.